Hi, I'm Andy Parkin. And today on Business Chat, we have Angela Peterson, who is a counsellor. The practice is called My Therapy Time and is based in Dunfermline. Welcome, Angela. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's lovely to be here. You're most welcome. So let's dive in. Uh, what led you to your work as a counsellor? Well, a, a very long time ago, I was with friends that were sharing and I had a thought before I even knew what counselling was, imagine if this is what you could do, you know, just for a living, being with people and listening to them. And when I left school, I went into nursing. I, I was a general staff nurse. I worked in a vascular unit, a surgical unit, and I noticed that the thing I liked most about the work was the connection, but because quite naturally the atmosphere was very busy and task orientated, I moved over and retrained as a mental health nurse. And I worked in a psychiatric hospital for a number of years. And when I was there, I recognized that I had a real interest in counseling and group work. And I met somebody there a, a counsellor in the hospital called Neville Singh and he absolutely inspired me with his way of being and so in my spare time I began working with a splinter group of women's aid um, and moving on from that I worked as a volunteer with Cruise Bereavement Scotland and what I did with cruise was I visited bereaved people in their home and I worked with them as a skilled listener and then after I'd worked with crews for a number of years they trusted me to work with their phone line so I had a, a an extra phone in my home and I took calls from people that wanted to use the service and then I matched them up with the appropriate counsellor for them and many years later I thought to myself you know wouldn't it be wonderful to to have a career in counselling and that's when I retrained again and I, I retrained as a person-centred counsellor, which is a method of counselling that I, I really enjoy. And um, I, I've done various work in that line and now I'm very lucky because I'm, I'm self-employed and I, I'm able to run my own counselling business, which is a real privilege. Wow, that's that's really, really inspiring. Uh, so, so what kind of counsellor are you and and what should clients expect from you as a counsellor? Well, um, my foundation way of working is that I am a person centred counsellor. And what that means is that I provide a safe, quiet, confidential space for people to come and share with me really and, and process and reflect with me. Um, there are boundaries that are set in the form of a contract which explains a uh, confidentiality, what that means. Um, and there are some safeguarding aspects around that. Um, so the nature of the work is very client led that there is no agenda on my part apart from being a place for them to feel safe to, to, to speak and each session the client brings the piece of work that is most appropriate for them and the pace moves at their pace also which I I really value because then the work feels very safe and respectful. I also have um, some other inputs as well, because when I worked with young people, uh, it was really common for young people to present with anxiety. And I realized that there was a gap in that 
sometimes it can be the case that somebody has anxiety and they don't quite understand what's happening. They think maybe something's broken in their body and that they're not they're not well. Um, and so part of my role is about psychoeducation and I explain what happens in our mind and in our body when we're anxious and that some anxiety is appropriate because it, it keeps us safe. So once there's an understanding of what is happening in the brain and the body, we also explore what is triggering the anxiety for that person. And then we look at ways that it can be managed. So uh, one of the, the examples that I give is that um, if you imagine a science speaker, um, the glass beakers that you get, and the bottom bit of the beaker is stress that is really useful, because often people think that stress is not good and there shouldn't be any but actually if we had no stress that would be stressful because we would be bored and uninspired so an example of helpful stress would be learning to drive which feels quite scary when we're doing it but then is really useful and makes our life less stressful because we can drive places yeah. um, and then the middle bit of the beaker is full of things that maybe we can eliminate stress that we have that could be getting in the way such as for some reason you know we could explore if if a, a person is late a lot we could look at what does that mean you know what's the reason for being late because the lateness can be causing stress that maybe could be eliminated so that that would be a piece of work looking at why that might be happening because these middle stresses in the beaker they are choices so if you reduce them then the bit of the beaker at the top which is life's unexpected happenings the uncontrollables if you've removed the middle bit of the beaker then in effect what can happen is when we have these unexpected stresses we are much less likely to spill over and be emotionally dysregulated so there are all when people come to the room I say that, you know, it's as though there is an imaginary suitcase on the floor and one by one we put in various tools that may be useful in terms of stress management according to how they are presenting and what is going on uh, in their day to day life. And part of that is body work because um, managing stress can be about coming back to body and um, coming away from that paradigm that exists with anxiety that we're we're distracted and we're partly in another world which is in our in our minds in our thinking and it's so part of the healing work is coming back to body coming back to the present moment and that would be part of the working on calm which is another stage of of the work so it's very strategic and encompasses you know that looking at the person's life as an entirety in order that they can begin to feel more comfortable again yeah, I, I really love the, the the kind of beaker analogy. That that really kind of sums it sums it up. And I've never particularly thought of it in in that way. As you say, it's there for a reason. You know, we 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 need things at, at certain times of his uh, of of his life. But yeah, the overflowing of the beaker. That's a, a really good uh, a, a good example of that. And and I guess with as you say, there's certain uncontrollables in his, in his life. Uh, and so I, I guess it's uh, kind of accepting that there's always going to be some of those un uncontrollables and maybe focusing on the middle that you, as you say, that you can control to a, to a certain degree and, and doing the work there rather than, I guess, increasing the anxiety about the uncontrollables. So yeah, no, that's, that's really great. Uh, why did you choose the niche of anxiety and overwhelm? What was the thoughts behind that? I, well, really, the, the first reason for choosing it beca was because in the work that I've been doing before now, so many people were presenting with anxiety and also in the press. 
you know, when we watch television or read or read the newspaper or magazines, there is a big focus on the fact that our community is anxious now. There's a lot of anxiety and and it is a tribal thing. Anxiety is very uh, contagious. You know, if you have one person in a group or a family that's anxious, it tends to spill over and make other people anxious. So I, I just thought that it would be a helpful thing. I looked at the community and thought it would be a helpful niche to have. And also it's all encompassing because, um, you know, there are many different reasons for people to be anxious or overwhelmed. It could be to do with relationship issues or overwork or um, bereavement. And also it spills into physical health as well, because sometimes when we're anxious, we can under care for ourselves or over involve ourselves in some some things maybe try to get get busier and busier to cope with it so actually it's a huge scope of of work under that one small heading yeah so how can we actually help ourselves if we if we're feeling anxious and overwhelmed well one of the one of the things that's recognized is when we are triggered or dysregulated, one of the, the big things that makes a positive difference is to be with somebody who is trustworthy, calm, and, and is willing to listen. Because as humans, we are, we are built to be in contact and connection with one another so one of the big things that can help is finding somebody that that you feel safe to to speak with and connect with and that could be somebody in your personal life or it could be about coming to to therapy and finding that space a lot of people like therapy because they can be honest and then know that what they've said as long as everybody's safe what they've said stays in the room and um, so connecting in is useful and then the great thing about managing anxiety is there is no one solution. It can be supported with lots and lots of small efforts. So exercise is one thing, because when we take exercise, what happens is the adrenaline in our system is metabolized through the liver and, and we lose, lose it. So um, having some form of exercise every day can make a big difference yeah. and a plan so that that can be one of the ways that therapy can be useful because uh, together what we can do is create a plan that works for you around your specific set of circumstances wow lovely so are, are you actually developing any other services uh, along with your talking therapy yes um as as a result of this niche being busy and lots of people looking for support around anxiety, um, what I'm working on, on at the moment is a support site. So that would be a site that people can sign into online where there is written material, uh, video form material and um, guided meditations so a whole collection of stuff again an, an online toolkit that can be used and so that could be support material for somebody that isn't able to come into therapy at the moment but maybe is looking for support it can be support for somebody that is going through the therapeutic process and it can also exist for somebody that's had their therapy and is is coming to the end of the work but feels that this that that support would be useful to, to keep as part of their toolkit. Um, I have been learning about the work of Capacitar, which is an international organisation that focuses on body work as a way of um, reducing uh, the sense of, of stress. They go into countries that have been impacted by crisis and, and trauma and they teach the body work to the community with the 
the sense that once Capacitar uh, finished the work, that the community continue to teach the work um, and, and that the good work spreads in order to combat the, the sense of, of stress and trauma. So um, I'm planning to put uh, some of the bodywork from Capacitar into the, the membership site. Excellent. And, and that way as well, I guess you're able to earn uh, to uh, help so many more people uh, as well, not just people that are local to you, but uh, throughout the world, really. Well, at the moment on my YouTube channel, there is a there is a video about the emotional freedom technique. And I mentioned at the end of that video, it's a free video that people can, can link into. And I mentioned in the, that video that if that tapping process helps you, then please feel free to, to post the video on to somebody that you feel would benefit from using it. So yeah, absolutely spreading, spreading the stuff. So, while we are talking a lot about the fact that we have anxiety in the community, we can also begin to talk about the things that help calm and comfort in times of difficulty. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's amazing that one kind of small little, I don't know what you call it, a little wave can actually just ripple and, and go out and touch so many, so many people. Uh, I love the idea that uh, it's all about it's it's not keeping the information with one person and it's secret. It's about getting it out there and letting as many people uh, know as possible and help them to deal with with their anxiety. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's really amazing. So what do you take into into consideration when you're working with clients, Angela? Um. Oh gosh, my clients are my biggest teacher. Um, I am very fortunate indeed because in the years that I've been involved in this work, I have had the huge privilege to, to work alongside people that are so knowledgeable and supportive in, in this realm of work. And then moving on from that, my, my biggest teacher are my clients. And so, Really, my, my aim in this work is to be client led and learn what is going to be of most benefit and try and provide that to the highest standard. Yeah, no, that's 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 great. So, Angela, if, if somebody wants to work with you uh, one to one or perhaps, uh, you know, look at your resources, etc., What's the best way to get in, in touch with you? I would say the best way is to look at my website, which is mytherapytime.co.uk. There is information that may be useful uh, in the form of uh, reading and also video. Um, and the last page, there is a contact email form that um, if somebody would like to ask for specific help, they can explain in the, the email and just send it off to me. That's well, that's great. I mean, what I'll do as well is obviously I'll put all your contact details uh, with the video uh, as, as well. So we'll have all your details there. Well, thank you very much, Angela, for giving us an insight into the world of anxiety and how people can, can actually deal with that anxiety. I like the beaker thing. I'm going to be telling people about that today. Uh, I really like that, uh, that, that analogy. It gets into my brain to, to understand it without it being too, too technical. Uh, but that's, that's great. Well, thank you, Angela. Uh, you take care. And... Uh, We'll uh, hopefully speak to you soon. Okay, thank you very much.